Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, as I received some comments requesting for electric power steering, we're gonna have a look at uh, this EPS, uh, which is removed from a Mazda 6.3. So basically we're gonna dismantle the components. We will see uh, what are all the components inside the electric power steering, how they work. And when we are dismantling, we're gonna refer to some common problems in the power steering. And uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna take the camera in the car to show you how to perform the calibration and EPS coding with scan tool. Uh, let's uh, start before starting the diagnostic. If you haven't subscribed the channel, please make sure to visit our channel page and subscribe it for getting the notification when we upload new videos. You see this electric power steering mechanism. First of all, when you have electric power steering, I'm gonna refer it to EPS from now on. When you have EPS on a car, it means you don't have hydraulic anymore. It means you don't have the steering fluid, you don't have the pump. So everything is just eliminated and you have electrical mechanism. So generally EPS could be located on different positions on a steering system. This one is mounted on the steering column, as you see. Uh, there are some designs that this EPS motor is located on the pinion and on some of them like this one that you see on the screen uh, EPS is mounted on the rack itself. Generally this one as I said is removed from a Mazda 6.3 but the operation and the design is generally the same on different cars as well so whatever you see here is applicable on many other EPS system as well. Generally when you have EPS, this, these are all the components on the EPS. So what happens when you are in the car, when you turn the steering wheel, you're gonna turn the steering column and the steering column goes exactly right into this part, which is actually a sensor that we call it torque sensor. So if you see, this shaft goes all the way through the torque sensor to this side. You see, if I turn the steering wheel, I'm actually rotating this shaft and the torque sensor which is located under this cover is going to measure the direction of the steering wheel rotation and how much torque we are applying on the steering wheel and it's going to send the information through this wiring to EPS module so this is the EPS module as soon as EPS module receives the information from the torque sensor, it's gonna start analyzing the current situation. It's not gonna go directly for driving the EPS motor because we don't need very same power on EPS motor all the time because when you are driving at low speed, you're gonna need a better assist from the EPS. But when you are driving at high speed like in a highway, you don't need your steering system to be that sharp. If your steering system is as sharp as low speed when you are driving at high speed, it's gonna to be too dangerous. So system should analyze the driving condition by monitoring the engine speed and vehicle speed. So basically this EPS unit is connected to the CAN bus network. And by using the CAN bus network, this EPS receives the engine RPM from the engine control module and vehicle speed from uh, ABS or ESP control module. So regarding the CAN bus, if you need more information about the CAN bus, we have a couple of videos for CAN bus diagnostic. You can find them on the description or on the channel. Okay, so after analyzing the current situation uh, at EPS module, EPS module will activate the EPS actuator or EPS motor, which is right here. And this one will turn a gear right there and there is another gear just right under the torque sensor, which is connected to the output shaft. So basically just like it, everything is just happening through this process to help the driver, to assist the driver to rotate the uh, steering wheel. All right, let's start dismantling everything. When we see what's happening inside, it's gonna be much more clear. I'm gonna start by removing this knot. I just loosened it earlier. Uh, because I don't want to waste time right now when I'm recording the video. I'm gonna remove this knot. And there are four bolts down here that I need to remove to, to be able to remove the torque sensor. So there's, so there's a connector down here that I need to 
remove. This connector is for the torque sensor and this is the torque sensor itself that we're going to remove right now. Just like this. And if I take this one out, all right. So basically when you are turning the steering wheel, you are rotating this shaft. Here is your torque sensor and this is the output gear. So it's gonna be like this. When you turn the steering wheel, you're going to turn this one just like that. And torque sensor is going to read the direction and the torque on the steering wheel. It's gonna send the information from here through this connector to the EPS and EPS is gonna do the rest of the job as I explained earlier. And when EPS activates this EPS motor, we have one more gear in here, which is gonna rotate the output shaft. As you see, between this gear and this one here, we have a gear ratio to increase the torque. So we don't need to use a very big EPS motor here for activating the EPS system. So this torque sensor can come in different designs. So this could be actually one cause. We can monitor the operation of this sensor using the scan tool and the live data I'm gonna show you at the end of this video. Sometimes the whole thing is because of a defective torque sensor. So it means the APS uh, unit and the motor itself, they are all okay, but the problem is just right here on the sensor. That's why they changed the whole thing. And generally when you replace the entire assembly, you need to perform the calibration on this one. So ASB calibration is required anytime that you replace the EPS assembly. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on this video as well. Okay, let's move on to remove the EPS motor. All right, once you remove the bolts, you can take the whole thing out. So these two comes out together. If you look on the other side, right here, I have the unit here, and this is the EPS motor. Something which is common, sometimes inside the EPS assembly, we have some problems on this internal wiring and the connectors. So there's a relay in here. So this can go faulty, this can get broken. Sometimes this one gets too hot, it's gonna affect all these connections over the relay. So you're gonna need to check all these connectors just in case if you're going to dismantle to inspect the electric power steering. But one of the very common problems is actually here on this coupling. So this is the EPS motor. This coupling sits just right here. Okay, and this one is gonna rotate the other gear right there. So the problem is this coupling that I can't take it out just like this. This is actually one of the very common problems on EPS assembly on many cars. Many companies, they have TSP for this one for replacing it. Sometimes you hear clunking noise on the steering wheel. After having that noise, when you remove the EPS motor, you see this one is completely grinded, exactly like this photo that you see on the screen right now. So if this one is grinded and completely damaged, when you remove it, you see that there is nothing left in here. That's why there is a free play between here and this part of the output shaft. That's why you keep hearing that you know, noise on the steering wheel. So one more time how it works. Right now that we have everything removed, I'm gonna explain everything very quickly again. So basically when you turn the steering wheel, you're gonna turn this shaft. Uh, torque sensor is gonna pick up the signal about the direction and the torque on the steering wheel. It sends the information to EPS control module. EPS control module analyzes the situation by considering the signal received from torque sensor, engine RPM, uh, vehicle speed and couple of other systems based on the options that you may have on the car like uh, if you have lane keeping assist system that's going to be very important in here as well and then after analyzing all the situation is going to drive the EPS motor when EPS motor operates it's going to rotate this part of the shaft and this gear and then at the end of the day that gear is going to rotate this one and the difference between the size on this gear and the other one is actually for the gear ratio to increase the torque the output torque on the eps assembly all right guys this was how eps works i'm going to take the camera right now on the car i'm going to show you how to diagnose the eps with 
uh, scan tool. First of all, we're gonna focus on this one by reading the live data. Then we go for the torque sensor calibration. And on some cars, there is something like EPS type recognition that we need to do. I'm gonna show you that one with the scan tool as well. All right, guys, we are inside the car. I turn the ignition switch on. My scan tool is connected. Let's see what we can do for EPS diagnostic with the scan tool. So on the system selection on this car, which is a Kia Rio, I'm going to go for MDPS, which is motor driven power steering, another name only for uh, EPS. So I'm going to click on this one. As soon as we connect it to the EPS, we can go for the data stream first. So I'm going to select all these. And if you scroll down, you see the torque sensor value just right there. So basically, if you turn the steering wheel to the left and to the right, you get this kind of value. As you see, the unit is Newton meter is just measuring the torque. That's why we have NM or Newton meter here. So basically, when you turn the steering wheel to the left, you're going to get negative value to the right positive value. But right now, we are not getting anything about measured motor current because the engine is off if I start the engine so you see I'm not turning the steering wheel right now that's why the targets and measured motor current they are all zero but if I turn the steering wheel to the right just look at these two items right now so you see they are changing it means this is the current that motor is using and if I turn if I release it it's gonna go back to zero and if I turn it back to the left I'm gonna have this value. It means from the very first moment that you turn the steering wheel, EPS motor is gonna assist. That's why you feel the steering wheel really soft. You don't feel any hardness on the steering wheel. It, it works very well from the very first moment that you turn the steering wheel. And it shows that torque sensor is working and the motor is receiving the current and using, is using the current to assist you for turning the steering wheel. So if I go back to to the main page right here, I have a special function. If I go for that, I have two options which are really important. The first one is uh, the calibration. This one is really important to be done anytime that you replace the electric power steering assembly, if you do any sort of repair on it. So it's called ASP calibration. So ignition switch must be on, engine must be on, and we just need to make sure to turn the steering wheel to the straight ahead position, and then we go for pressing OK. <laughs> So engine is on, I'm going to press OK. Yes. So reset complete, turn the ignition switch off, wait for 10 seconds and then turn it on and press OK. All right, ignition switch on. And that's it. This was torque sensor calibration with the scan tool. Super easy. You just need to you just need to know how to do it. And the second one that we have on this car is EPS type recognition. Basically, because basically this car can be used on different countries, different regions, with different preferences for steering system assistance. So basically. You just need to select the region from here. This car is on Australia, is a right-hand drive. In some other cases, we have, for example, Middle East, we have Europe. You need to select the region. And here we can select between diesel or gasoline engine that we have, actually the item is in here. After, as soon as you select, for example, C1 for Australia, it's gonna set the region to Australia. And that's it, it's not really something complicated. This is actually for only for the region to go for exactly the preference, which is set for that region all right guys i hope you enjoyed the video this was everything about the electric power string internal components and how to perform the diagnostic with the scan tool thank you guys for watching